Hello and welcome to this uh, next tutorial in this Photoshop Element 7 series from Glenn Tilliard at digitalphotographycourses.co.uk um, Previously we've looked at the organizer and the quick fix editors and in this section we're going to be looking at the full editor. Uh, for those of you that have never seen Photoshop CS4 or CS2, the professional versions, then this is probably the closest that you will actually get to how they actually look. So we're going to start off first of all and what we're actually going to do is we're going to replace a sky. Um, so we're going to choose this picture down here and all we need to do is a couple of options to open this picture. We can right click and we can choose full edit and it will open the full editor. So here we have the, uh, the photograph that we've just opened in the editor now and as you can see this is actually a picture uh, of a building but it was taken um, on a quite a grey day and the sky is very white. So what we're going to do then is we're going to replace this boring old white sky with a uh, with a better one. So let's go off and find a sky we can use and what we'll do is we'll probably use one of these. I think I'll use this one just here. Uh, so again we're just going to open this in the editor so you can either click on the picture and right click as we did before or you could choose edit and full edit just here. And then we'll have two pictures open as you can see there's actually a couple of little spots on uh, this picture um, which we might sort of just get rid of as well um, but we'll do that. I think we'll do that later see if they actually appear on the other one so what we have at the moment is two photographs open and if we look down here at the bottom we've got what's called the, the bin and this is showing us the two pictures that we have so what we need to do is we need to actually uh, basically cut out this white area so these pixels become transparent and then we'll have the sky picture from down here showing through this area. Now, uh, so what we're going to do is we need to go over to the layers window and if the, the layers window here, the layers palette isn't open, you need to choose window and layers and that will open it. There we go. And what I usually like to do is I actually quite like to duplicate my background layer. It just um, if, if you make a total mess of it, you've actually got a copy of the original that you can work with. And the easy way to do this is if to just click on the background layer and just drag it up to the new layer icon. And now you'll see you've got a layer called background copies. So the next thing I say you need to do is we need to delete these white pixels. And if you delete the white pixels, they actually become transparent. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a tool called the magic wand. Now you can see that if you hover over any tool, it will come up with its name and also the shortcut key, in this case a W. So if I just sort of press C, which is the crop tool, and then W, you will see that it changes to the magic wand. Now what the magic wand does is it chooses areas of similar colour and tonality. Uh, and it does this by um, this, this thing at the top here which says tolerance. If you set this number very low, so if we set it down as 1, it will only choose quite a small area and as you can see it's not chosen the whole picture. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this tolerance up quite high and we'll try it at 33. It really is a bit of a case of trial and error this. And as you can see that really has given us these marching ants around most of the picture. There's a couple of little areas it hasn't included just there and the way to add to a selection the easiest way I know and it's the quickest and easiest way is to hold down the shift key and then just click in those little areas there and there might be one or two other little areas that we can sort out as well now I'll just point something else out to you quickly at the top here we have this thing called refine edge now what this does is it deals with how smooth uh, the join is between sort of this cutout and as a general rule of thumb if your object that you're cutting out is soft i.e. fur or trees or something like that then you need a smoother feather you need more of a feather and a smoother edge if on the other hand your cutout is going to be something hard like this building then it needs to be kept quite hard and the default if you click on the default button the defaults are a good starting point and it really is a case of experience and trial and error. So we're just going to click OK. So that is our selection. Now very simply we just need to press the delete button on the keyboard and it looks like nothing's actually changed. But if we nip over here to our layers 
we can see now that where it says background copy we've got this checkerboard effect and if I go to these visibility icon here and uncheck the one on the background you can see that we now have this checkerboard effect on the picture so the reason you can see the white is basically here you're looking at the white pixels below the transparent pixels so what we'll do is we're going to switch that layer off just to keep us so we know what we're doing and the next thing we need to do is we need to get rid of these marching amps and that's called deselect a couple of ways we can do this we can go select and deselect or the method I prefer is the control and D method because it's quicker okay so now we have our uh, clear area and we need to put the sky in an easy way to put the sky in is just to drag the sky layer onto um, onto the picture now to do this we need to be able to see both photographs so if you just click the box there which will minimize the windows and now you can see we've actually got both pictures sort of side by side if you need to resize these the easiest method is control and minus press the control key and minus and that will make them smaller there we go couple of clicks and now we have them side by side okay so we need to move this sky and put it onto this picture and the way we do that is by using unsurprisingly something called the move tool which is this one here and as you can see the move tool has got a shortcut of V so if I just press the letter V I now have the move tool and what I need to do and you can do this either way actually I'm going to drag the sky onto this building and there it is you can see it appearing behind the building and we can move it about to get it lined up nicely okay we don't need this picture any longer so we can either close it or minimize it and what we'll do is we'll maximize this picture control plus a bit make it a little bit larger okay so there you go that's the cutout and what we can actually do you can see now that we have the background copy layer and the sky behind it okay if you find uh, that your picture looks like this then it's because the sky is on top of the building and all you need to do is drag it down below the building there we go okay so that very quickly is that uh, as this, now what you will notice if we just go in quite close at the top here you can see there's a couple of little white bits here um, so what we'll do is I'll just zoom in use the zoom tool into those portions there we go choose the magic wand tool again there we go and press delete now you do need to make sure when you do this that you are on the correct layer we're on the background copy layer that's fine okay now this edge as you can see is actually a little bit furry it's not the best edge in the world that is down to the refine edge thing and it really is a case of having a play uh, and probably make them not quite so soft it wants to be a harder edge to make this work okay so just go control minus okay next thing we need to do is we're going to flatten this layer and the way we do that is we go to layers and we go flatten image discard hidden layers okay now you see we only have one layer what I'm just going to do now is I'm just going to bring up the levels control and L and this will be sort of something that you might recognize from previous tutorials first thing I would do is try it in auto as you can see that made quite a bit of difference and it's also blended the pictures together a few minor tweaks bring it back a little bit there we go click OK and that very quickly is how you add a, a better sky to a boring sky replace a sky on a photograph